Well, hello everyone. And I'd like to welcome you all to the 18th Women's Center Empowerment Luncheon. My name is Gail Strange and I am the Director of Church and Mid-Council Communications for the Presbyterian Church USA. I'm also the co-host of a local radio show called the Saturday Morning Solution. Um, it comes on WLOU every Saturday um, at 11 a.m. It's a radio show that uh, looks at contemporary issues and we look at um, ways to address the issues and give voice to the voiceless and the issues of concern to urban residents and communities. And I am happy to be your mistress of ceremony today for this event. During this unprecedented time uh, with COVID-19, the global pandemic, we've had to go virtually. Mm -hmm. Literally, we're online um, from our staff meetings, student group meetings, webinars and webinars and others um, so mark this one in the book as the first virtual women's empowerment luncheon. Please be patient with us as we make our way through. Um, Jamika Jones is now going to show us a PowerPoint um, with instructions. We have some instructions for you today. Uh, and this is so that everyone can get the most out of this. Uh, and to ensure an engaging and smooth program for all, we ask that you keep your cameras and your mics off during the program. We want you to actively engage with us. So please use your chat for any questions, comments, reactions throughout the event. And something that resonates with you uh, or excites you, we want you to react in chat as well. There will be a Q&A at the end of the program where you will have uh, the chance to turn on your camera and your mic to ask a question. You can raise your hand and you will be called on to ask a question or to type it in the chat. We will ask everyone to turn their cameras on for a group photo at the end. So make sure you're pretty and presentable so that you will be a great part of the program. And so now um, I'd like to invite Valerie Casey, director of U of L's program um, Women's Center to make yes. an introduction for Dr. Faye Jones. Um, and let's show some love for Valerie in the chat. Or you can clap. <laughs> Valerie. Oh, thank you, Gail. Thank you. Uh, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce my boss, Dr. Faye Jones. Uh, Dr. Jones, Faye, is the Senior Associate Vice President for Diversity and Equity and Associate Vice President for Health Affairs, Diversity Initiatives, and Tenured Professor of Pediatrics. Faye is a Kentucky native and graduated from Western Kentucky University with her BS in Biology. She attended medical school and completed her medical residency in pediatrics at the University of Louisville. Later, Faye obtained a master's of science in public health and a PhD in epidemiology, both from the University of Louisville. Faye also completed certificate programs in executive leadership in academic medicine at Drexler University College of Medicine and a healthcare executive diversity and inclusion certificate from Georgetown University in Washington, DC. Her impressive list of credentials continues, but most recently Faye was presented with the 2020 Presentation Academy Tower Award for women leaders in the area of science and healthcare. At this time, it's my great pleasure to invite Dr. Faye Jones to bring greetings. Please share some love for Dr. Jones in the chat. <laughs> Thank you very much, Valerie. I bring greetings on behalf of President Neely Bendapudi and the Office of Diversity and Equity. I'm honored to welcome each of you to the Women's Empowerment Luncheon as we celebrate the Women's Center for over 28 years of service on campus and in the community. 
and they as acted as a driving force for champion issues of women and girl empowerment. How appropriate it is today uh, for today's luncheon that we will hear words of wisdom from our outstanding speaker and local civil rights leader, Miss Maddie Jones, and recognize the winners of the uh, Mary Kay Tech Paul Tech Hall Gender Equity Award and the M. Celeste Nichols Award that supports the work of outstanding graduate students. I am humbled to be a part of this long-standing tradition at UofL and hope you will enjoy the program. And I would like to turn it back over to our mistress of ceremony, of ceremony so we can continue with our day. Thank you. Gail, you're on mute. Thank you, Dr. Jones. We are indeed celebrating the Women's Center who has been serving the campus and community for over 28 years. The Women's Center has many programs and events throughout the year for faculty, staff, students, and the community through empowerment, education, and outreach, and building community, activism, and civic engagement. The Center has grown from a one-person, self-funded office in the basement of an administrative building to a unit of the Office of Diversity and Equity with four staff members, five student groups, a living learning community, an employee resource group, and an alumni group. Keeping the mission and vision alive with these groups is the staff and their wonderful teams of volunteers. The director, Valerie Casey, has worked at the Women's Center for 15 of her 17 years at city. The staff, Phyllis Webb, Patsy Rutzel, and Jamika Jones have over 100 years of combined work experience with the university. And our graduate student, Sokeka Tariff and Unique Gaither, work with the living learning community and assist with everyday tasks. We want to extend a thank you to our teams of dedicated volunteers who contribute to the success of the Women's Center. These diverse and dedicated people have a passion for advocacy and social justice, including the Lactation Committee, Kentucky's Women's Book Festival Committee, and the U of L Women's Network Advisory Committee. They lay the foundation for the work of the Women's Center to be a catalyst for empowering others. Highlights from the Women's Center include, but are certainly not limited to, in collaboration with our student organization, the American Association of University Women at U of L, and the Student Government Association. Our tampon task force worked with the university to provide vending machines with free products on campus. There are now 46 vending uh, machines on all three campuses, strategically placed where possible in gender neutral restrooms to support our transgender student. This one project alone impacts thousands of people. Special thanks to the members of the Lactation Committee and the Commission on the Status of Women who worked diligently with the Women's Center and succeeded in getting approval for a lactation policy for the University of Louisville. To support U of L faculty and staff, the Women's Center established the U of L Women's Network, an inclusive organization committed to encouraging and promoting the personal and professional development of women faculty and staff throughout programming, sponsorship, and networking opportunities. 
With oversight from the Women's Center staff, our five student groups produce educational programs to inform students and the community, and also to provide leadership opportunities for students and teach them leadership skills they will need as they transition into the workplace. Signature programs include annual Human Trafficking Awareness Conference, now in its 11th year, an annual International Women's Day, as well as the annual symposium on global women's issues. We have the honor of working with these amazing students who are the leaders and the change makers of today. These groups include the American Association of University Women, first and only AAUW student chapter in Kentucky, the United Nations Association Women, and it's the first and only chapter of its kind in the country, Women for Women Student Board, Student Parent Association providing additional support service for our students who are also parents, and Women's Veterans Student Support Group. If you are a member of the Women's Center staff, student group, or a member of one of our committees, we thank you. The Women's Center could not have the tr tremendous impact that we have without your support. We are also here to celebrate the winner of the Takao Gen Gender Equal Equity Award and the Dr. M. Celeste Nickel Award recipient. The Women's Center is proud to recognize at this time, the winner of the prestigious Mary K. Bontill Tatka Gender Equity Award. The Tatka Gender Equity Award is sponsored by the Commission on the Status of Women chaired by Heather Fox. The award is presented jointly to the Commission and the Status um, and Women's Center. It is named in honor of Mary K. Von Still Takao, constitutional scholar, the first woman to serve as chair of the UofL's history department, and the first woman chair of the faculty senate, and as such, the first female on the UofL Board of Trustees. Dr. Tackall was active in pay equity struggle at the university and in many other issues, both on campus and in the community. And she was well regarded by her peers. The award is given to a member of the University of Louisville community who has done significant work towards gender equity. The selection committee is Mary K. P. Sheridan, who is the chair, Barbara Bishop, Carsil Bar Barrett and Valerie Casey. Sponsors are U of L's Commission on the Status of Women and the Women's Center. This year's winter winner is Lisa Gutterman. Through the Fairness Campaign, the Louisville Youth Group, the Rustin Community, are so many other spaces. Lisa Gutterman has fostered institutional and strict rule change that has helped women and fem fems increase their self-reliance and safety as they contribute to society. These are qualities Tech Agenda Award celebrates. Let's give Lisa some congratulations in the chat. The Dr. M. Celeste Nickel Professional Development Award is intended to honor the memory of Dr. Margaret Celeste Johnson Nichols um, and to further the mission of the University of Louisville Center to offer support and resources to empower women with the goal of promoting an inclusive and equitable campus community and to develop engaged and compassionate leaders. And before we go on to that award, I believe Lisa will have a few words to say. Lisa?
Hey, thank you all so much. Uh, I have a true confession. Uh, I was already registered for this event because Miss Maddie Jones is the speaker today and she's like a lifelong hero and role model to me. So I had to read the email twice and I was like, wait, that's my name. Uh, so thank you all so much. Um, while I'm the recipient of this award, I feel like it's important to recognize that the work for liberation is collective. We each have a role to play. Dr. King described it as the inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. I didn't learn these words from school, rather on the sidewalks and streets in Louisville from bullhorns of events led by Miss Maddie Jones. I've learned so much for her over the last <clears throat> 30 years, and I quote her lessons and uh, quotes often to students. For Maddie, I learned the words of James Baldwin to Angela Davis, that if they take you in the morning, they'll be coming for me at night. I also learned that even if you're shy about singing in public, when Miss Maddie links arms with you at a rally and says it's time to sing, you sing. Maddie, I hope you know how much you've meant to me over all these years, and I'm forever grateful for the lessons and also for the laughs. Speaking of gratitude, I want to express my thanks to my Office of Diversity. I get to show up to work every day with amazing colleagues, both in the Office for Diversity and in the LGBT Center. Thanks especially to Diane Whitlock and Blaze Bush for the nomination, to the nominating committee, to the sponsors, and to the Women's Center. I couldn't do any of this work without all of you all. No list of gratitude would be complete without recognizing my family and thanks that this is a virtual event. Uh, my partner Becky is able to join. My kids Zach and Eric might be sneaking away from NTI, don't uh, report them to see this moment. My parents Pete Marion Gunterman and my in-laws Jane and Joe Roy are also here today. As I conclude, I want to recognize that we're in the middle of two pandemics of COVID-19 and racism and it can get really discouraging at times. So I want to leave you with the words of Margaret Mead and recognize that each one of us has has the ability to make a difference to to us. She taught us never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Thank you all so much for this honor. I'm thrilled. I was shocked and I'm just so thankful. I appreciate all you do and thanks for doing your part to build a better world. We certainly want to congratulate Lisa um, on receiving this award. She certainly embodies um, every bit of the TACA Gender Equity Award. And so our next award is the Dr. M. Celeste Nichols Professional Development Award. And it is intended to honor the memory of Dr. Margaret Celeste Johnson Nichols and to further the mission of the University of Louisville's Women's Center to offer support and resources to empower women with the goal of promoting an inclusive and equitable campus community and to develop engaged and compassionate leaders. The award is given to support academic and professional enrichment beyond normal graduate program expenses. Dr. Nichols was the first African American to receive a PhD from the University of Louisville's Department of English. She earned a Doctorate of Philosophy in Rhetoric and Composition. While at UofL, Celeste was a close friend and mentor to many. Special thanks to this year's sponsor, George J. Howell Student Leadership Fund, the UofL Women's Center, and the English Department. Committee members are Phyllis M. Webb, Chair, Joan D'Antoni and Mary McMullen. This year's winter winners are Alex Hammond, Brittany Smart, Charlotte Asmuth. Let's give and congratulate each of them in the chat. Certainly, there are so many people out here doing so many wonderful things to make a difference in our community, and we want to express our sincere thanks and congratulations to all of the winners of both of these awards. 
And now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce our speaker for the afternoon, Mrs. Maddie Jones. Maddie Jones, a local civil rights leader and social justice activist, is a native of Memphis, Tennessee, and moved to Louisville as a child. She graduated from Central High School in 1951. Go Yellow Jackets! From there, she went on to attend Indiana University for a brief period, but ended up transferring to the University of Louisville, which had just desegregated its main campus. She then left college to join the Black Workers Coalition to fight for employment equality. For over six decades, Jones helped organize countless demonstrations public conversations and boycotts, focusing on everything from desegregation to women's and workers' rights and environmental justice. She also marched against segregation in public schools and for open housing in the 60s. Jones, a founding member of the National Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression, describes herself as just another soldier in the army for peace, justice, and equality. In Louisville, she worked closely with the Kentucky Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression with the late Reverend Louis Coleman. She and Coleman also worked together at the Justice Resource Center. They later worked together to see that a high percentage of minority-owned construction companies were involved in the creation of Papa John's Cardinal Stadium and the KFC Yum Center. To honor Jones' 85th birthday in 2018, two blocks of River Park Drive were honorarily designated as Maddie Jones Way, which intersects with Lewis Coleman Drive, Lewis Coleman Jr. Drive, which shows that the two of them are still working together to move traffic and people forward. Jones and her husband, Turner Harris Jones, had nine children and raised 120 foster children. In January of 2020, Mrs. Jones was honored with the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Award from the city of Louisville, the, from the mayor's office, during the Keepers of the Dream celebration. The award is given each year to a Louisville resident who has designated dedicated their life to promoting justice, peace, and freedom. At this time, let's welcome our prominent speaker, Mrs. Maddie Jones, and show some love in the chat. Dr. Jones. Good afternoon, my sisters. It is a pleasure, it's more than a pleasure to be here in the office of the Women's Center today, to be a witness and to give testimony how far that we have come through the works of centers like this, through the work of individuals like us. And you know, my heart just jumps for joy to see one of the awardees that I can remember that started out when she was just a little kid. I used to refer to her as bad thing. So I am just overjoyed here this afternoon just to be here with you all. I wouldn't think of any other place I'd rather be than right here on the campus of U of L in the office of the Women's Center. My sisters, you know, I used to sit and hear James Brown sing the song about it's a man's world. But if he was living today, I would ask for permission to add another verse to that. It's not only a man's world, it's our world. It's women's world. It's our time. And we are on the march and we are going to the mountaintop. Women today, we've come a long ways and we still have a long ways to go. We have a lot of celebration. I can remember years ago, as you just heard, several years ago, I made 85. 
I'll let you do the math. Today I sit here with two more years, three more years on that 85 to be an 87 a teenager. And the things that keeps me going is the strength that I get from the younger women that is traveled on the same path, similar to the path that I had to travel on. But you know, there's not a self-made woman at all. We've all had someone that reached out and touched us, reached out and said things to us that would make us strong. I can remember when I first started out, graduated from Central High School. Oh, I thought I was grown. I thought I knew everything. I thought I knew the way. It didn't even strike me. I never even heard the word of racism. Although I walked past three, four white schools, all white schools, just to get to Central High School, 8th and Chestnut Street. Oh, how I love that school. To get there in the morning and hear the voice of Maud Brown Porter, the late Maud Brown Porter, the uh, assistant principal that would greet each student by their name. Sometimes she would say their full name most of the time. Maddie Florence Johnson, she would say good morning. What that meant to me, the courage that it gave. So I was so proud that I never looked back to see that I was living in a city where this was separated by not only streets, but by the institutions and by the laws that guarded this road that I had to travel into adulthood. I can remember when I was a student in the Anna University, I thought I was grown that year. I had packed my bag and left home. Oh, I knew I was on the way. But when I got there, things changed. So I began to say to my brother, which was about eight years older than I, to pick me up every weekend and let me come home to enjoy the company of some of my friends and my neighbors and my community that did not leave home, that stayed. So I did that for a whole semester. It was wonderful. I thought I had it made until one afternoon before I left to go back to the campus of Indiana University. My mother said, let me talk with you a minute before you leave. And she said to me, you know, you can't run up and down this road every weekend. You're going to have to stabilize yourself. You're going to have to either come home or you're going to stay where you are until the appropriate time to come home. So I said, yes, ma'am, but I wasn't really pleased with what she was saying. I went back and I says, no, my brother didn't show up that weekend. So there I was. So I had to get myself together and I decided it was kind of lonely for me there. I felt like I didn't have a place. I didn't have a voice to hear of anyone saying to me that you can make it. So I decided I would come home. So I came home and home was real good. I began to see some of my friends was home and some that would come home to visit. And I was having a very, very good time until that little lady, the little five foot lady that was mama, to be down again one afternoon and says, let me tell you something. This is not a time to have a good time. The good time will be you will have to seek employment or you will have to get yourself back in school. She says, no, I'm going to tell you what I want you to do and what you must do. You're going to seek employment. You must have an education to get through this world. And education is something that can't nobody take away from you. So in the morning, you don't sleep till 10 or 11 o'clock. You're up at 7. You're out at 9. Well, I couldn't find a job really that I work that I wanted to do. So what did I do? I went on and rolled at UofL to get her off my back. So I got UofL and it was a little bit more friendlier because I'd met several of my classmates. So I decided one afternoon I saw in one of the little brochures that they needed some help in the administration building. And I was a commercial student. I thought I typed fairly well. I thought I wrote shorthand fairly well. So I applied for the job, only to be told that the women in the office could not work with me. I was so upset. I had passed the angry mark. I had become one mad woman. I left the campus just 
on fire. I came home still on fire, throwing chicken chairs and just totally, totally out of control. This little five foot inch woman called me again, sit down. She said, now let me tell you something. This is something you're gonna face as you walk this journey called life. She says, and you're gonna to have to learn that this is not a journey that you can take on by yourself. This is a journey that you have to become a part of something to help make a change. She said, it's been like this for years. She said, that's why I preach my sermon to you about education. This is why I preach my sermon that I stood up and worked so hard, your dad and I, so that we could get you to this point. And we're not going to let you lose this at this time. What a sermon I heard that day, but I still was not satisfied. The only place I could go, I was very tall and I thought I was pretty smart, but I ended up working at Spalding's Laundry. And being tall, I worked on the shirt line. But there I met the differences. 90 degree weather, I'm on the shirt line, just press by, not press by, and sweating. <laughs> then I looked over on the other side of the building. There were the white ladies. They were in the cool, and a great big fans was all around them. So they were not as hot as I. I began to realize and see the difference. But I had a mother, this little five foot woman, that when I came home, in the afternoon, she would talk with me. She would tell me what I could do. She could tell me how I could win this battle, not by myself, how I be could become a part. And this sermon began to hit me. That sermon began to touch me very deeply. So I began to seek a help of what I could do to become a part of making a change. So one afternoon, I was on my porch sweeping and a neighbor came down and she said to me, are you free this afternoon? And I said, yes, why? She says, because I'm having a meeting at my house and I would like for you to come. This person, my neighbor, was the late Senator Georgia Davis Powers. So I went down that afternoon to her home and surprisingly in walks Ralph Abernathy, C.T. Vivian, they were introducing themselves, and shortly here comes Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We talked and we were made plans on the march on Frankfurt. That is a touch of me wanting to become a part and be a part of changing this city and really changing America, the reaching out and the touching. After that, I became a part of the Black Workers Coalition. There I met other women that were determined like myself. And we joined hands together and we shared the same thoughts and all of becoming a change and to make in this city a different city than what it was. But I say all of this to say to you that you cannot be a self-made woman. Someone has got to reach out and they've got to touch. And we've got to be women that when we climb up the mountain, we've got to come back down that mountain and we've got to reach back and get the other little sisters and, and, and some brothers that are struggling that can't find their way, that's confused. We have got to be the satellite to light up our women, to let them know, no, your job is not just to be home to wash, iron, and cook, not to just to have babies. You can rise up. You have a part in this world to be a part of every and anything that is offered if you get yourself prepared. You've got to have the dedication. You've got to have the love. You've got to have the desire to say, if I can help somebody as I travel along this way, if I can reach out for some young woman and bring her from one step to the next step, if I can just reach out and give the love that will build a better community, if I can reach out and create laws, rules, regulations 
that will help this city realize that it's not just one color of skin that makes it, it's all of us together. And it's not just men, it's us, because we can do what we want to do. If we so desire to do this and do it with all sincerity and remember that it's a love that we have to reach back. We've got to help build young women. And at these times now, the opportunity is great, but we have to give that kind of encouragement that will help our sisters. We can't talk about our young sisters. Oh yeah, some of them are doing things that, oh, I thought that little five foot woman would kill me. But now it's a different ball game. Everything has changed around. The education is no longer that it's all black sitting up in one classroom. The education has brought us from, I would use of the bus to the front of the bus, to the driver's seat. And now when we're in the driver's seat, hey, let's give a clap for our vice president elect, Mr. Harris. First time, first time, first time. Here I am now, 87 years old. Hey, and I see this, uh, a woman. Then I look back some years. Well, there was Hillary Clinton, a woman. She said that she wanted to be president. And then I go back a little bit further and I say, hey, Shirley Chisholm, you ran the race and ran a good one. But there are no self-made women sisters. We've got to be sharing this love, sharing what we have with each other. We've got to build each other. Again, I say, if you can reach out and bring that little sister to the fold, and if you can show that love, if you can help in your community, if you can help in your church, if you can help in your electoral process, then your living has not been in vain. Let's don't waste each and every moment that we have because sisters are in the march. And as Dr. King said, we're gonna keep on marching. We're gonna keep on marching until we reach freedom land. Freedom land is equality, justice, peace, and opportunity, and being recognized as equal. That we are not just the housewife. We're not just the wife. We are your strength to strengthen you as we strengthen ourselves to march on to that highway, to that mountain that Martin said he saw, but didn't get to see it in person. But he did get to work on it. And that's what we must do. And that's what I must do. I know that I am not in the coming class. I'm in the going class. But I want to leave some footprints back here so the little sisters can start marching and keep on. I see a great difference in the time of my time when I was out there protesting. Yes, they were there. They may not have did it like we wanted to do it. But they came out. They did stand up. And if we wrap our arms around them, we can lead them on up to a better city, a better state, and being a part of sharing a better country where liberty, justice, and freedom is to all of us. Let us march on, sisters. Don't ever forget where we came from. Don't ever forget what we have to do as women. Don't ever lose your pride. Don't ever lose your dignity because we are somebody, we are women. Thank you this day for inviting me. I certainly hope that there has been something said that will touch someone as they travel along this way. And I don't march like I used to. I don't get out as often as I used to, but I am home and most everyone knows where I am when the weather's good like it is today, where I'll be when I leave you this afternoon. I'll be sitting on my porch at any time you're welcome by my home. If I can say something or if I can call or whatever I can do that will help someone on the way, I am open. I pray for you, you pray for you, for me, and may the creator shine upon all of us and help us as we go through the struggle of creating that world where we all or realize according not to our sexuality, but to our 
dignity, our pride, our thoughts, and our work in making a better community and America. Thank you again for the inviting me. I bet they're going to say back any questions. Ask. Are there any questions that someone would like to ask me? Let's all thank Dr. Jones and show around, give a, her a round of applause and certainly uh, shows her some love in the chat. Dr. Jones, you are just, oh my gosh, such a role model, such a living um, legend. And just to hear you talk about really life experiences that some of us um, certainly never saw, but we are certainly the beneficiaries of all the efforts that people like you and other uh, community activists have, have put in place for us. And we thank you for everything that you have done. And we so look forward to um, having this conversation with you. And so we wanna thank you for taking time uh, to speak with us today and for sharing your insights. Again, you are a tremendous role model uh, for women and for women leaders. And um, I'm sure you have so many stories that you could um, share with us. And we really do appreciate you um, taking time to share this story with us. And so at this time, uh, we will allow a few questions uh, and answers. And so um, please raise your hand uh, by using your hand signal in your um, chat boxes, and we will call on you at that time. Or you can make a comment in the chat boxes and we will uh, recognize those questions and ask those to Dr. Jones. So we'll give you a few, a few moments to do that. Uh, we have Tina's hand raised. You can unmute your mic and ask your question. Hi, I don't know if you're asking me to talk already or someone else. Uh, Tina Ward Pugh, I had her hand raised first and you can go next. Okay, oh, you're fine. It. You're fine. Tina, did you have a question? You can go. Tina Ward Pew. Yes. Yes. Are you, hello? Yes. You can ask a question. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, Miss Maddie, just wanted to say thank you and um, uh, remind you and everyone I stand on your shoulders and I'm honored to be there. Um, and I want to thank you for your persistence. I want to ask a question that someone uh, that Hannah uh, Drake actually asked um, someone, if how did you, how did you stay in the fight when you were when you were being treated so poorly when you when you were denied the right to vote because you sang off tune? What how was it? How, how did you keep going? Well, I've got a lot of strength from when we had the training. Uh, at the Highlander Center, that before we started doing demonstrations and protesting, uh, our training of nonviolence. And then, too, uh, the lecture that my mother gave to me about you don't win anything by kicking and arguing and doing all of that. So I was prepared for the eagerness and the obstruction that they were going to throw at us, asking for what was rightfully ours that we should not have to be asking for. And then too, I worked with uh, Ann Braden, which taught me an awful lot. She and uh, Tom Moffat uh, were very, very good people 
of nonviolence. Okay, um, I see another hand from Steve Lipman. Hi, it's actually Judy Lipman. It's just his name on the account. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Ms. Maddie Jones from ages ago when I was in peace education program and you let me come to your house. And I can't remember what it was that we needed to talk about then, but I've never forgotten that. But what I wanted to ask you now, number one, thank you. Thank you for sharing the life that you've lived and the directions that your mom taught you that came from yourself as well, obviously. But my question right now is, you know, things have sort of quieted down since Breonna Taylor's shooting and the protests downtown going into the, um, the museum. But it's not, we're certainly not over. There's lots to do, but do you have advice right now for how to help right now? Right now, we will have to prepare ourselves to be sure that we write, make a, well, in a better word, a manuscript or what we see that would make this a better city. We must present these to who is the elected officials. Not just one time. We've got to stay there with them. We've got to demand the right of every citizen in this city. We may not have to be marching anymore, but it's very, very important that we make the uh, council people's meeting. We make appointments to see the mayor. Uh, and if they don't want to see us, then I'm a great believer. I'm not, non, I'm not violent, but I'm a great believer of taking over civil disobedience, in another word for it, please, taking over the office and sitting there until someone comes. Uh, someone, maybe the sheriff's to take us to jail. But this is the way that we have to get things done. Violence has never brought anything back but violence. And we don't want to destroy. We want to build and make this a model for other cities and states throughout the country. And that's the way we do it. And uh, most of all, the we biggest weapon that we have is that vote. Each time, if that official didn't hear our cry, didn't try to work with us, we have the choice. Vote them out. Work on getting the person in that shares our concern and our love for our communities. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other questions? I don't see any hands at this point. Well, Mrs. Jones, I'll um, ask you a question. Um, how do you feel, given the current climate of, of our political situation, that America can move forward to really try to mend um, this great divide that has been thrust on us by our current, the current administration? Well, you know, uh, the uh, president-elect, Joe Biden, has said the, the mouthful in so many words. We should not just dedicate ourselves to, hey, we are Democrats and the Republicans can't help us, and we don't want them to help us, and the Republicans can't have the same attitude. We've got to learn that, uh, I can't forget the singer that used to sing that this is land, this is my land, all the way from what, the New York Island, the Rock Island, mm -hmm. or something like that. We've got to learn that it's not about party affiliation, it's about the decency of people. It's, again, you've got to deal with the heart and the soul and yes. the mind of the leadership. And now as this leadership and the president-elect is calling on unity, and we've got to keep that unity and not get angry and upset like perhaps the other side want us to do. But there's no such thing as, hey, I can get it all done because I'm a Republican. I can get it all done because I'm a Democrat and I can work on it because I'm independent. This is a world we're all in it together the same as this virus if we don't stick together we will lose everything thank you
other questions? Trinity, uh, I have your hand raised. You can unmute your mic and ask your question. Yes, I was wondering what's another way that we can support this movement? Another way to support the movement. Another way to support the movement. Um, another way to support the movement. Everybody don't have to march. Everyone don't have to protest. But there's many ways. There are businesses that you can not buy. There are businesses that you can ask to meet with the CEO, and you can demand and make your demands and make your voice heard with them. Uh, there's also there are peaceful demonstrations that can be held. You don't always have to march. Then too, you can also write to the editors of your newspaper. We have two, we have the Courier Journal, we also have the Louisville Defender. Get an editorial in there, writing. It plays a major part. Thank you. Other questions? Uh, Rhonda, you can unmute your mic and ask your question. I think we lost her. She's trying to join again. While we're waiting on, uh, I believe you said it was Rhonda. Ask uh, Mrs. Jones, what do you think Dr. King would have to say about today uh, and the climate that we're living in? He would say to us today that uh, we have climbed the mountain a little bit. We have not completed the process of judging us by the color of our skin. He would say to us that we have not reached the promised land. He would say to us that we cannot stop marching. We cannot making aware that injustice and racism is still alive. But he would say, don't turn your head to it. Don't close your doors to it. As my mother had said to me, become a part of an organization uh, and become a part in taking parts in community activities to let your voices be heard. And I'm sure today he would say, hey, look, from Rosa Parks, sitting in the back of the bus, brought us from that back to the front of the bus, to the driver's seat. And from the driver's seat, now we're becoming CEOs of transit authorities and all. So he would want us to not give up, keep on going. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Hello, yeah. Well, I certainly don't want to cut our time short, so is that a question? Um, I see a hand. Yes. Uh, Rhonda heard Mathis. Okay. Rhonda. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm out there with the young protesters, and the problem as far as a lot of people don't have the privilege of seeing, and me being out there on the front lines and observing, and uh, with the police, the FOP, and they are intentionally trying to uh, agitate these young people when they are doing peaceful protesting, but they purposely uh, agitate to lock them up, for, want to force them to use force with force, and they are smart enough not to do that and sharing with them to store filing complaints against officers and get their name and badge numbers uh, to follow through and to get some answers to that. Uh, we living in a time as far as authority figures abusing the law for their purposes. And we as citizens, uh, no one is above the law, but they use that to be above the law and it needs to be addressed 
from the mayor with Metro Council in dealing with these issues that we face uh, with civil disobedience in our city. Okay, thank you, Rhonda. Did you have a, a question for Mrs. Jones? I I'm asking Big Mama, uh, what would she suggest? I would suggest number one, I am so glad to see the young people out there. It brought my mind back to the old times when we had the young people and the organization was called SNCC. But now we're old school and young folk, middle-aged folks, y'all got to kind of listen at we old schoolers. Some training has got to take place when you all meet these attacks. You cannot, and you got to know how to do the respect that is due the respect to get the respect to do to you. And then when this begins to happen, we have got to know that we have the Justice Department, that we as citizens can call in and ask for protection. We can file lawsuits, we have that right. And we have some very good young attorneys here in this city that's willing to help. So we have to get ourselves ready so that before we hit the street, we know what's going to happen, and but we must be prepared because you don't get nothing back with reacting. If they act violent and you try to act re-violent, you are not getting any place. Nobody wins in that situation. It's not a win-win. So young people and demonstrators, I admire you, but please get yourself ready. Don't just get out there because the cameras are out there. Get out there, being trained with an understanding, with desire in yourself that you are there to make a change, to make this a better place for your children, your grandchildren, your families, and a total community. Thank you, Mrs. Jones. Um, is there another question? Well, I'll ask this question. How can you feel comfortable, as you said, preparing yourself and knowing our legal rights and, and having a game plan and going forward? And then we have an attorney general here in the state of Kentucky that, as well as the national attorney general, who just almost have a disregard for, for the truth and the law. How, how do you fight against that? Well, he's an elected official, so we can't get rid of him until election time comes. And I know everybody that hear my voice this day know that they got to vote to get an attorney general. But secondly, we can also file complaints. We can also write editorials to educate, if you will, others that don't know the work that he is doing. Mm -hmm. And we can also, again, civil disobedience. There is nothing wrong with on the streets in front of his home, as long as it's peaceful. And we can't stop with just doing it one time. We've got to be able to make the whole total state know his actions and know his actions again by, again, editorials. And if possible, if we can be on TV talk shows to talk about injustice. And we'll also have some very good law students that can help us in how we go about filing these complaints to get some help in to help us not bear with him until election time. <laughs> Thank you. Are there other questions? Going once, twice. Well, if there are no other questions, we certainly want to thank Mrs. Jones for her insight and her wisdom. Um, and we just so much appreciate you. You are such an icon and have paved the road for so many of us. And so many of us stand on the shoulders for the work that you have done for us. 
and for this community and for this country. And so for that, let's show her some love through the chat. Let's give her some a round of applause and let her know how much we appreciate everything that she is doing and has done. And so now um, we're going to ask that um, each of our participants um, turn on their uh, cameras. We're going to take a group photo to commemorate this occasion. Um, and the Women's Center coordinator, Jamika Jones, now will set up our virtual room so that those beautiful smiles um, are ready and we can see them. So we want to see you. Make sure your lipstick's right, your hair's right, <laughs> and everything. Um, and show some real love and some real girl power. <laughs> Jamika, you got the camera ready for us? Are we all camera ready? Can you hear me? Yes. OK, because my, my computer, I guess because of the overflow that I've had to do with all the tech today, it's still saying my mic's off. <laughs> all right. Um, so whoever wants to have their camera turned on, please do so. I understand that some people might not want their camera on. Um, if whoever does not have their mute, mic muted, please do so to eliminate any background noise. And I'm about to get this set up. Give me one second. Okay. March gallery. Okay. All righty. Are you guys ready for your photo walk? All right. I'm going to do a couple of them because I know there's always one person who closes their eyes during a certain moment just to make sure we try to get as many people smiling faces going. All right. But I'm going to count to three. All right. One, two, three. All right. I'm going to do another one. One, two, three. Thank you. So I get to do the closing today. Um, I am completely biased, but I think Joan is definitely a powerful last name, which was definitely presented to us by hearing uh, Ms. Maddie Jones. <laughs> um, so thank you uh, to have those people come before us. It, it, it's, it's, I really can't say much. It, it, that was very powerful for me. Um, and so thank you, Gail, as well, who's been our mistress of ceremonies today. Um, she's done a phenomenal job. So thank you for taking away from your busy schedule to do this for us today um, and help us facilitate our annual program. Uh, I would love for everyone in the chat to thank Ms. Gail for helping us today. And for those who are asking, we will be posting this photo on the Women's Center's Instagram and Facebook page, which I will I have a slide that way for wondering how to find us. Um, but please thank us. I thank the planners for our virtual program today. This was actually our first big virtual program that we have held. So thank you for being here with us. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Phyllis Webb, Patsy Russell, Unique Gaither, our student events coordinator, and our graduate LLC contact, Sukana Tarif. Of course, Valerie Casey. Thank you to all of our amazing student groups who many of them keep me up at night, but it's well worth it. Uh, our American Association of University Women, our Student Parent Association, Women for Women Student Board, our United Nations Association Women, and our Women Student Veteran Support Group. These students every year do phenomenal things. If you ever have an opportunity to attend any of their community programs, please do so. Um, they do a lot of great work. Um, to do these programs. And so I'd like to also, I'm going to admit someone real quick, thank all of our sponsors today. Let me get this slide up for you guys. Lots of love in the chat. You have been working diligently to make all this happen and I'm I'm so proud to meet you and so thankful for everything that you've done. Thank you. I, I love technology and this has definitely been a fun experience and letting everybody in and seeing all the love in the chat. Um, so again, thank you. 
So definitely thank all of our sponsors. Show them some love in the chat. The Women's Center, the Commission on the Status of Women, the George J. Howe Student Leadership Fund, and the University of Louisville English Department. They were able to provide funding for all of our awards today. A special thank you to Cassie Grace Muir in Archives and Special Collections uh, in University Library. She created our Miss Mad for our event to her. And definitely get involved and support the Women's Center. With your all's continued support, we are able to continue to address all of our students' needs, whether that's, of course, financially, everyone could use a little funding right now, but we also understand pockets a little tight, but that could be volunteering your time, whether it's being an expert speaker for a program, supporting our students as a mentor. There are lots of ways to support the Women's Center and all of our students and also our faculty and staff. So for you guys who want to see that picture when we upload it, definitely stay connected with us. Um, you can find us on Facebook and on Instagram. And if you want to learn more about our office, you can definitely go to our website. Um, and here's our email and phone number if you want to connect with us. Um, and again, thank you all so much for being here with us today and hearing from these phenomenal people. Um, you get to now get to enjoy the nice weather outside. So have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a great evening.